In Excel, you often need to move data from one file to another. So let me show you not just how to automate this process, but also how to extract only specific parts of data, as well as how to combine multiple sheets into one. The first and simplest method that you're probably familiar with is linking. So let's take a look over here in this Excel file, which you can download for free in the video description if you want to follow along. For example, if we wanted this data set in a new worksheet, we could just press on this plus sign and I could link it by equals and just simply selecting the data starting up here. And now I would just need to drag it to the side to column F and then drag it down to row 15 like so. The problem here, and let me zoom in a bit more with control alt plus, is that if I continue to drag this down, you'll notice that I start to get all of the zeros. And that's because if we go to the data tab, we don't have any values down over here, hence why we get the zeros. That said, if in the future I want to add something over here, I would like it to be shown. So it makes sense to have the zeros all the way down, but they look quite ugly, so we want to get rid of them. And one way to do that is just by adding an if statement up top here. And we're going to say that if this logical test is equals to two quotations, meaning nothing, then we want to show nothing, which is just two quotations, comma, and if not, meaning that there is data, we want to show exactly what's in that specific cell. So in this case, it's the B2 cell. We can paste that, close the parenthesis, and hit enter. Now, if I drag this all the way down, you'll notice that I no longer get the zero, and I can do the same thing to all of the other cells. Awesome, that's looking much better. I can go back here, type someone's name like Mike, and you'll see that it shows and there's no zeros too. In this case, I've shown you how to go about it for different tabs or different worksheets, but how about for different Excel files? Over here, you can see that I have two files that are completely separate. And what I would like to do is copy everything from this left one or move it to the right in a way that it's dynamic. So if I make some changes down over here, these should be reflected on this side. And what we can do is the same linking, so equals, and we need to double click this time on the ID. You'll notice that we now have the name of the file, which is original XLSX, and then we have the specific page and the data that we want to be copying. Hit enter there, and you'll notice though, as we try to drag this down, it doesn't quite work. It's not going down to the numbers. That's because by default, it adds a dollar sign, which basically locks the reference, meaning that it's not copying down correctly. So we can just delete those dollar signs from there and now we can drag this all the way down to row 15 and we can drag it across as well. You can see that's all working correctly. I'm going to quickly add that same if statement as before so we no longer have those zeros. So this is the test that we want it to be equals to nothing which we can put two quotations for comma and if it's nothing we want to add nothing in there so two quotations comma but if there is some data we want to add the data from the other sheet which we can just copy from here Control c and just paste it in here with Control v close the parenthesis and hit enter and now i can drag this even further down and you can see we get no zeros there same thing when we drag it to the side i could make an update here let's say i call this fanta you'll notice how that automatically pops up same thing with any number that i want to put the problem with this method is that you always have to make sure you're linking things correctly. If not, there is going to be an error. Luckily, there is a much better solution which involves using tables. And surprisingly, very few people know about this method I'm about to show you. Step one is to select the relevant data and convert it into a table by pressing Ctrl T. Click on OK there and you'll see it's being converted. Once you do that, if you go under table design, you'll notice on the left hand side, table has a name. In this case, it's called table two. We can leave it at that or rename it. I'm just going to leave it. But now if we go to a new tab and want to copy over the table, we can reference it like an Excel formula. So we could call it table two. You can see as soon as you start typing that, it starts to show up. Hit the tab key there. And now we want to add the square brackets like so. You can see there. And you'll notice that we start to get a lot of different options like only showing the ID, so the ID column, the manager column. In this case, let's say we go with all. Hit the tab key there, close that square bracket and hit enter. And you can see we have all of the data, which is exactly the same as the table over here. The nice thing about selecting a table like this is that you can now add new data. Let's say I go add another row down over here quickly. 
you'll notice that it's been added and the tables actually moved down one row as well. So now if we go down to the next tab, you'll see how this is being included as well. That's not all though, with tables, perhaps you only want a specific column to be shown. If that's the case, like I showed you just earlier, instead of selecting the all feature, we can delete a few cells and let's say just go for the manager, close those square brackets and hit enter. If you wanted the manager and the quantity sold, you could copy and paste and this time around change the inside from manager to unit sold. Hit the tab key and hit enter. Another awesome feature with these tables is that it doesn't really matter where you move them around. Even if you paste them over here, they're going to have the exact same data because they're not really referencing by cell, but rather by named range. That's one way to go about filtering. The problem though is that it only allows you to filter by columns. You can't really filter by rows, like for example, by specific beverage brand. Well, let me show you how to do exactly that, but this time with two different Excel files so you can see how that works as well for a table. So first over here, we would just type equals and we need to make sure we select the entire table. So from the top to bottom, and you'll notice that as soon as we do that, it's going to start showing the all in square brackets again. We can now hit enter and we have the entire table in this new file. Now on this upper part, let me actually add a few more rows like so. And let's suppose that we want to find only those that are specifically Fanta. So the transactions with the beverage that's equals to Fanta. And for that, we can use a filter function inside of this cell. So at the very beginning, we'll type filter, hit the tab key there and the array is going to be all of this area that we currently have, comma, and we want to include the beverages. So it's going to be this column D over here, control shift down. And then we want to make sure that equals to Fanta, which is this cell right here, C2 for us. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see we're only seeing those transactions that are equals to Fanta. And now I can reformat this a bit better. Let's say we put this as the beverage over here and we can change this around to, let's say, Sprite. And you'll see how all of the data updates too. Something like this is particularly useful if you have a master file and you want to divide it into specific beverages, for instance. So far, we've looked at moving data and even extracting specific parts. But what about combining data? Before we get into that, if you want to learn in-demand data skills, check out our data analyst program. This program consists of four individual courses and over 300 lessons. First, in Excel, you'll learn the best practices for formatting, formulas, charts. Then you'll apply your skills in real life case studies from data cleaning to building a dynamic financial model. Then in Power BI, you'll dive into data visualization and creative interactive dashboards to extract maximum insights from your data. Thirdly, in SQL, you'll work with larger databases, writing SQL queries, and even connecting databases with applications like Excel and Power BI. Finally, in VBA and macros, you learn to automate tasks like generating pivot tables, PNL reports, and much more. So whether you're in or looking for a career as a data analyst, business analyst, or financial analyst, join our program now in the link in the description below and gain the skills you need to thrive in today's data-driven world. Finally, if you want to join data, like joining multiple sheets into one, here's how to do it. You can see that I have three tabs for January, February, and March. And suppose I want to add it into a new file, that's the totals file. I can do that by first pressing Control N. And from here, I'm gonna head over to data. Under get data, I'm gonna go from file and choose an Excel workbook. Once you click on that, it should take a while to load. But here we want to select the file that had all of the data. In my case, it's the months file, which has the data for January, February, and March. I can click on import and here you can preview the three sheets. It doesn't really matter which you select, but we want to go over to transform data. This new page should show up for the Power Query editor. And on the right hand side under apply steps, we want to close these out. So X these and in the source here, you can see we have all three tabs and the respective data in the second column. So we don't really need any of these three columns. We can select all three by pressing the control key, control and click there, 
and just remove columns. Now for this one that has all the data, we want to actually see it by expanding on this and clicking on OK. Now it's got all the data, but we have some headers we don't quite need, except this first one that's going to be the top header. We can use the use top rows as header option to add that all the way to the top. And for these other two lower ones, we're going to filter them out. So we'll click on this drop down and deselect the month. That's something we don't want and click on OK. Once you're happy with how this is looking, we can click on close and load. And you'll notice all the data loads up over here and it's got not just the month of January, but also all the other months as well. Best part is if you were to add new months to the original file, for example, let's say I make a copy here and add some data for the month of April. And then over here, I'm just going to change that to APR as well. Just going about this quickly so you can see what that looks like. I'm going to save this. And when we go back to the totals file, once we click on the refresh button, we should be able to see we don't just have the first three, but we also now have data for the month of April. So it continuously updates as long as you press refresh. Speaking of Excel files, another super important skill is identifying the differences between Excel files, which you can learn how to do with this video over here or by taking our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.